I've been keeping a little secret under my hat, and that is this game behind me, Nightingale. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but it's a crafting survival game that's coming out this month. And I want to talk about what potentially could be a groundbreaking game in its survival in the survival genre. Um, so I want to first give you just a quick overview of what Nightingale is about. And then after that segment, I'm going to come back and give you my take on what I think are going to be some earth shattering gameplay that players that choose to play this game are really going to find it to be immersive, challenging, and the repeatability. At least that's my first impressions. But before we get into that, let's get into a little bit about Nightingale. Hey everyone, today we're diving into the mystical world of Nightingale, a game that's been on every adventurer's radar from its Victorian gas lamp fantasy setting to the rich interconnected realms waiting to be explored. Join me as we unravel the history, the journey of its development, and what's in store for us come its release on February 20th. Nightingale's journey begins with this ambitious developer, Inflection Games, a studio born from industry veterans with a vision to blend survival and crafting in a shared world experience like no other. Their goal? To immerse players in a fantastical world where every corner holds a new story, a new challenge, and the freedom to craft their destiny. From its initial announcement to the gaming community's first glimpse at gameplay, Nightingale's development has been a spectacle of anticipation and excitement. Through early previews, Inflection Games showcased a realm of possibilities, setting the stage for a game that promises to redefine genre boundaries. Inflection Games, with its roots deeply embedded in storytelling and innovative gameplay, aims to create a universe where players can not only survive, but thrive. Crafting, exploration, and community are at the heart of Nightingale, reflecting the developer's dedication to delivering a rich, player-driven narrative. As Nightingale prepares to welcome adventurers into its enigmatic world, anticipate a blend of survival mechanics, crafting depth, and exploration thrills, from building your own sanctuaries to braving the dangers that lurk in the shadows, Nightingale promises an experience filled with discovery, camaraderie, and the relentless pursuit of the unknown. Okay, so what is Nightingale? Nightingale is a crafting survival game. And basically the premise of the game is that the Pale have taken over and only the city of Nightingale remains. We are a realm walker and our only way of getting and exploring and traveling is through portals. And our objective is to get to the city of Nightingale. Now, how do we get through these portals? There's um, portal areas in the open world, which basically has does not have the portal activated. And in order to activate these portals, there's machines by these uh, portals that are not activated as seen here. And you need these cards, these realm cards, in order to activate the portal. Now, that is a basic explanation uh, of how it works. Um, but these realm cards are used to open the portals, like I said. And with the ultimate goal of reaching Nightingale, the beauty of this game is that it's so immersive. So these portals that we can open are procedural realms when they're created. So they're unique in several ways. They're unique by the cards that we use. And these cards are... Um, uh, crafted in the game or earned in the game. 
And there's three type of cards that impact the generation of the realm that and the portal that we're opening, right? So there's a biome card, which selects which type of realm we'd like to go to. And when the game launches on February 20th, there's going to be only three, well, there's going to be three types of biomes. There's going to be forest, swamp, and desert. And then there are two other types of cards. There are major cards and minor cards. Major cards impact the major features of that realm and portal you're opening. And that is difficulty, resources, maybe the bosses. The minor cards have minor influences in the generation of the realm. And that could be things like weather. If you want to play only in the daytime, you can make it so it's only daytime. If you want to impact the resources of the realm, things like that. So the minor, the fine tuning basically of uh, that realm. So three cards and the cards that you put into the machine of the portal you're trying to activate, you can basically fine tune it to what you want to experience. The beauty, And this is what makes this game so immersive and i really think there's going to be a very high repeatability in this game and that is the fact that we are going to every individual player is going to be able to create their own realms and portals if if that makes any sense um looks like we'll only be able to use only one biome card per portal so you can only make it a forest, a swamp, or a desert per portal. You can't mix and match. But we can stack multiple major and minor cards. Now, there is a caveat to these realms that we're opening up and generating. They close, and you will not be able to go into that area again. So... You might ask yourself, well, then where would I, if I'm playing this game long term, where would I set up my base? After all, this is a survival and crafting game. Big part of survival games is building your home, your base, maybe playing with friends and setting up a major base. Um, so this is where the respite realms come into play. And a respite realm is a realm you designate as a respite realm. And that realm will be able, to, you will be able to set up your base, whether you want to play by yourself, whether you want to allow your friends to be able to come in. And actually, the respite realms are hosted by the game developer and it will be accessible to all the players that are playing Nightingale, if that makes any sense. Hopefully I didn't confuse any of you. But the point is, these respite realms, which you will designate, is your base. And you will be able to continue to go to your base through the progression. Now, what makes this game so attractive and and, and just you can see the repeatability in this game is the fact that these procedural realms, the non-respite realms, which we create dependent on how we mix up our cards, whether it be the biome cards or the major and minor cards, that influences the generation of the realms. Um, so we can, if we wanted to make a realm that has higher tier resources, resources as we're progressing through the game and we want to get higher resources or higher gear we can generate a realm to correlate with that this is this is what's so like awe moving about this game is the fact that you can see just by talking about the mechanics of how this game has been built just the endless repeatability there is and replay uh replayability of the game so it's just unbelievable. I wanted to very quickly just give everyone a general overview of the game. 
it looks really good. It's very, very detailed. There's a lot in this game uh, that I'm just like scratching the surface of it. It's, I think if the, if the developers can, dev you know, deliver on this game, the, the, the depth of this game is just remarkable. So I'm very curious to see how it goes. There's a lot of anticipation in this game. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how things pan out. Now, February is becoming a very busy month uh, as far as all these games that are dropping. Specifically, I'm a little bit concerned for myself personally because there's a lot of the games that I'm talking about. There's like a handful that are coming out all around the same time. Uh, it's going to make it very interesting to see how I navigate all these new games because I do want to put my hands uh, it, the, on a lot of them, especially this one. This one, I love survival crafting games. Um, uh, yes, you heard that right. It's, I'm not just a action RPG guy. I love survival crafting. I love building bases. I love hunting. I love, you know, gathering resources. I love that progression of starting from nothing, you know, rags to riches kind of thing with resources, gear, area, adventure and that's the other beauty of this game yes there are um you know like this npc that we we encounter in the beginning puck you know there are tasks he gives us but it's not linear it's it, we can explore an adventure at our own pace and, and and the world is just unbelievable and the enemies um, are are crazy good. So it's going to be very interesting to see. So I wanted to share this with you. Have you been keeping your eye on this game? Have you played it? Uh, were you part of the test server event on February 2nd? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Uh, maybe survival games are not your thing. But I would love to hear from you otherwise. And... Uh, can't wait to get my hands on this game. This is, uh, I think this is going to eat a lot of, of my time. Um, so anyway, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.